back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here with Jeremy doing a very special unboxing. You know why? Because we have sneak peek instruments before anybody else get them. Right now we're gonna talk about the brand new Eastman E20 SSV. And double O. There you go. We'll look at that one too. So John, we're back with some very special sneak peeks. And right. we want to thank you, the viewer. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because because of these videos that we're putting out, manufacturers are now sending us previews before they go out to any of the dealers. They said, we want you guys to make some video content on these and tell right. us what you think. And that's what we've got right here. That's right. So subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends so that we get more of these early editions of these instruments. These are the first of their kind. They are. I'm these excited. are the very first ones in the States. And guess what? That also means we get to bring them to you before everybody else. These will be uh, for sale before anybody else gets them, which is actually also But first really, we're gonna really tell awesome. you what they are. What are they, John? So uh, let's take it back uh, a little bit in our time machine to... <laughs> we were doing a Wayne's World thing earlier. Might <laughs> yeah, as well. To uh, the beginning of 2021, right in uh, January of 2021, we're supposed to have a NAM show. Uh, which is, in case you don't know, that's where all of the companies show off. The National all their Association new of Music Merchants. Merchants. It's ginormous. It is ginormous. Every manufacturer shows off all their new gear, all the old gear. You get to talk with the reps and talk about ways to get new gear and understand it and all that kind of good stuff. And every manufacturer shows off new product. That's one of the, I think people ask, why go to NAM? One of the really important things about NAM is it puts a deadline on these guys to say, That's right. we need to launch this by summer NAM or winter NAM. And it gives them like that That's right. added motivation to say, let's get this done. These guys this done, actually is case in point right Because there was right no here. NAM. That's right. They, this is now 2022. Here's, here's what, I, I got a phone call from uh, our good buddy Dan at uh, Eastman. And they said, hey, uh, uh, just to let you know, we're about to release a bunch of stuff that was supposed to be a NAM thing, and because of COVID, we didn't have an actual NAM in-person deal. So he said, we're going to have a bunch of new models. And we had the new 615 Mandolin MD615 Gold Burst. Uh, we had the new 720, or all the new AC series. That all was announced right at that time. And then this one was kind of like a hidden one that I ordered, and I ordered a bunch of them. I ordered a mess of all those instruments, um, but it was one called an E20 SS. Uh, v and then the E20 00 SSV. I didn't get to see a picture of them. I didn't get to see anything about them, but I knew I probably ought to order them. Uh, all they told me was, John, it's like the other guitars that we did in the E10 uh, varnishes, except now in Rosewood. And guess what? We're going to do a sunburst on top of that. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I had no idea what they were going to turn out like. So. Now we fast forward uh, almost a full year. A year and no NAM deadline. <laughs> That's right. This allowed these deal uh, these manufacturers to kind of eh, drag their feet, drag their feet a lot, and they did. And finally, we got this, and I got to see a picture of this uh, like about two weeks ago. And then uh, they called us and said, "Hey, we're going to send you for a video review." Well, actually, I got two of the SSVs and one of the double O's. Uh, in fact. Right now, you're holding something extremely special. I that feel extremely is special being able to hold this. the only one that has been imported into the United States so far, so don't mess it up. I'll drop it. Um, it is the Which, only it's one. It's okay if I drop it because let's describe what this SSV, all these numbers and letters okay. mean. So E20 means it's their traditional with the rosewood back and sides. Correct. Um, Adirondack, Adirondack spruce, spruce top. top. Correct. And the SS slope shoulder, shoulders. So the shoulders for right. you new novices to the guitar lingo. These shoulders drop off a little bit quicker. They slope Rounded, off. yes. Kind of like as you age, you know, you look at John's shoulders here. It's just starting to round. No longer that big football physique he used to have. Yeah, football physique. You know, That's what I had. Out. I so always had a football physique. It's also known as physique. the John Chapman shoulder model. <laughs> Droopy um, shoulders. So that's I believe the I SS. call it droopy shoulders. Anyway, that, uh, that's the SS. Part that is. The that shoulder. is the SS. And, then and v, also for you that uh, are our guitar aficionados, these are Gibson body shapes. Um, this is Gibson's original dreadnought shape. This was their double O shape. Um, their L double O, the J forty five, J fifty, J forties, thirties, whatever you wanted to be. This was their shapes. Which they did so. have an E twenty SS out prior to this. And yes. then we just added the V, That's which right. is varnish. And Eastman decided with their varnish, their, which I there's debate on whether this is a cool thing or not. I like it. They took one of the best uh, violin varnish departments and sent these guitars to their violin varnish people that are experts at antiquing the varnish. So it's hand rub varnish that has this kind of 
wear aged, and tear. Wear and tear. So, so let's let's take a step back because there is a lot of people talking about this on the internet. I don't want my guitar already beat up and wore out before I get them. Well, here's the deal. Eastman has a massive orchestral division, and there's a lot of great violin company, companies out there. They do violins, cellos, and all that kind of stuff, and they do a hand rub varnish finish. This is a finish that has been around for many, many years. Violins have been done in this way. Mandolins were done in this way, and guitars were done in the in the teens and 20s. Varnish was the finish Old to go. Old world technology. It is, and, and it has a different sound. You actually have to rub a varnish and build up that pa uh, or that finish, and it is protective. It is more protective than a satin finish. It is not as protective as a lacquer or even more so one of the urethane finishes, which are extremely protective and more shiny, but it also lets the instrument breathe a lot more than any of those other two uh, finishes, but those are also easier to spray and easier to work with. Um, so now we take that step back. Violins, when you buy a high-end violin, that is the way you want it. You don't want a shiny, glossy. You look cheesy if you walked into the orchestra saying, those, "Look at this shiny new violin." Those orchestra I got. snobs, those symphony snobs, they just walk in the room and their head up in the air. I have a old Pinky instrument. Pinky when they talk, I believe, yeah. and they they don't actually do that, but I, the I imagine they do. Oh. <laughs> They're monocle. I see how shiny your violin is. <laughs> No, and then it, you're kicked it, out. It's an so, embarrassment. So they, they actually make them look like they have been played and they're, they're old violins, even when they buy a new high quality right. instrument. Wear and tear and it's, you know, case rash, the things that we kind of see, because varnish is a little softer. It will get some of those dents and dings and have character. So anyway, we take a step back. They've been building violins that way. They decided, Eastman says, we have this violin varnish department. We know it sounds great. Let's have them do guitars. And they started with a few acoustic guitars, moved into their electric guitars, extremely popular. So those of you who are asking, no, they do not make a varnish finish without this. This is actually their character. Their so standard. you have to have the relicking or uh, the kind of beat up, what beat up look. Antique. Um, yeah. So uh, Patina. It definitely has patina. And it's not an easy technique. Like, you can overdo that. I've seen Fender did some road rage wear <laughs> stuff. Road rage. Looks like they just took it behind a pickup truck and dragged it. <laughs> and that looked a little over. I think they just, like, whipped it with chains and hammers and... and a cinder block. A cinder block. And yeah, they just went to through, town. Through, <laughs> took two guitars and started banging them together. So it By the way, like that was a wear. fun session. And if we had a videotape that, you would have all watch it. But this, they, they subtly do this. They Like I said, they perfected it with the violin department. Um, it's got some of the nicks and stuff you would have. If you like accidentally close your case on it, a little, little pick scratch, scratch here or there, and it's not bad. I'm nervous I would... doing that. Like I, they have experience doing it, but you know that if you do one really bad one, they're gonna have to refinish it. So you have to be yeah, pretty precise in it, make it look pretty real, and they did a good job, I think. Yeah. So anyway, that's what these have. It is a rosewood back and sides, Adirondack spruce top, like Jeremy said, ebony fretboard, ebony uh, bridge, bone nut and saddle. Still, they did something new with this uh, one, which was add a cool new uh, inlay pattern, which are diamonds, uh, very thin, and I think they're actually very tasteful. It is something that I would see a Gibson uh, guitar do. It is not one of their like fancier ones. Probably more in those off brands like they did Recording King. Uh, and when I talk about recording, I'm talking about when Gibson owned Recording King, Kalamazoo. Those type of guitars uh, would have had something similar guitars. to that uh, a pattern, except not in an inlay. Um, this one is patterned after the L double O. They actually did uh, when they got the original L double or E twenty SSs, E ten Ss. They shipped over an L double O that was an original Gibson one uh, to the factory in Eastman. Were able to actually mic it and model model after. everything after that. So that's why you do see the slot through saddle on that one. Um, I've had people asking why don't they do that on the guitars because some of the old J forty fives did have slot throughs. There's some reasoning behind it, but biggest one, uh, I will say, this does give it a very cool look. One thing that's uh, kind of a problem for slot through saddles, if you ever plan to put amplification in there, this cuts down your options dramatically. Basically, you're stuck with either a, uh, a type of transducer that attaches to the top, such as the K&K, &K, which we absolutely love, and nothing wrong with that, but you can't use any of your under the saddle pickups because they really don't. There's ways to and do even, it, it really doesn't yeah, work Yeah, changing well. action on these and stuff is a lot more labor intensive because you have to take it off the top of the saddle because if you're taking it off flat. the bottom, it's no longer the right length and it's too mm -hmm. short for that slot. So it, they look cool, but probably not as easy to change your action on or put a under saddle pickup in 
Absolutely. Another unique change that they did on the E20 uh, 00SS, this year they did a slotted peg head. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not sure it was the right choice for me. Uh, again, you guys tell me what you guys think, but I know what they were going for. Right now, slot peg heads on small body guitars is all the rage. Taylor's doing it with almost everything they have. I like the look of it. Changing I like strings the look, isn't as fun. I like the look of it too. I just not sure it fits this guitar. I love how antiqued and how they have that sound, the vintage sound and all that kind of stuff. And if I wanted that, for me personally, I'm going to give my opinion out there. I would have stuck more with this shape, which kind of harkens more to the Gibson headstock. Um, but again, I get it. I know why they did it. Those of you who love um, your slotted peg heads on small body guitars, I love it too. i just not sure I would have done it on this particular model. Um, but that again we get we go back and that's a personal choice um pick guards on these are really pick cool guards. too the pick guards this is actually where i get to brag a little bit i don't know if you know this or not it's but... unlike you john <laughs> not known to be a braggadocio <laughs> individual uh, we've got to do a lot of really great things with eastman and it's one of the reasons why we uh get you know get these opportunities to do you know these special guitars and stuff which is actually helping with co-designing and coming up with ideas for them uh, we give a little they give a little that is right and we uh, gave we yes. did. When they first came out with the first SS's, uh, V's, all the V's, um, they came out, they had no pick guards at all. And I'll be honest with you, I saw them in the catalog. Uh, I thought it looked awful. Um, the double O was okay. The dreadnought was just, it just didn't look right. It's missing his shoes. It didn't. And, and in fact, there was actually talk uh, that they may not release the dreadnought because they weren't sure how it looked. The double O looked so good and they were cool with it. Um, but I had met up with a guy by the name of Mario Pru who builds tortoloid pick guards and uh, he started sending me some stuff and I we went actually out to California for a damn show and went stopped in Pomona and they showed me that original prototype and I said hey guys would you mind sending this this home with me and we took that first one and I actually did the big long guards um, and put those on there, which are the bat wing style long guards uh, on that guitar. And I still have that guitar to this day. I ended up keeping it. I think it looks great. I think it really harkened to really get the more Gibson-y looking pick guards, and that's what we're using here. This is a Gibson uh, L00 style guard done on there with that tortoloid material. And Mario does, he hand pours all these, so all of them have the variants you would expect in a natural tortoiseshell mm -hmm. or that early you know, tort mm -hmm. tortoloid looking pick guard not kind of printed off on a piece of uh, paper and laminated. That's right. Unlike Ends up, in the end, Eastman loved the look. They liked both designs. They did some of them in the long guards. Some people love those, some people don't. Obviously, more pick guard material on the top means that you get more resistance of the tone. Um, but that, again, is a huge advantage of these particular ones over some other brands of pick guard material is these are really thin and uh, don't harken the tone, don't kill it. Okay. They don't murder the tone of your guitar. You They're light enough that you don't notice a major difference uh, uh, in the sound of them. And we, we so. still carry those long guards too. If people want to order mm -hmm. that, we can put those on there. But I think it just looks, on these style guitars and with this sunburst, I was really impressed with yes. it, how well that looks on there. Yep. And then we talk about that. Last thing on these guitars, the sunburst. I was really surprised that we're doing this because usually a violin varnish is going to be in that reddish color uh, or some sort of brown or something of that. Never see a sunburst violin. Yeah, I don't I know if you've seen that. I, it's not real common, I don't no. think. I mean, they may have a little variance towards the edge, get a little darker, but it's more just kind of wear looking. I think they killed it on this. Uh, of the things that, uh, when I finally saw the picture, that I was most impressed with, this sunburst. This looks original, it looks right, um, with the varnish and stuff. I think if you were just shooting these guitars uh, from the top uh, without a whole lot of uh, explanation to anybody, I think most people would be fooled very easily into thinking that this is an old Gibson guitar. Um, you know, and then we get into the sound, the varnish definitely gives it that. This guitar... ...has a more vintage-y tone. It is an open, woodsy, but still has that precise character, a little bit more distinct, you know, top end. So. Uh, again, kudos to Eastman for these new models. I think they're going to sell well. Um, I don't know what you think. I agree. I, I, I don't care what you think. Are actually. these the same open gear tuners? That different? They have to be different uh, I just mean, not a little on this bit. One, but 
these seem a little bit different than the standard mark or well Eastman, are they not? what they end up doing no these are the same ones that they use on they, just uh, antique those as they well. do antique them and kind of give them a little more character as they do with most of the ss or the varnish models they do some antiquing of the metal parts to go along with them same with the mandolins they do that uh same thing so i believe these are uh the overall open back geared uh, tuners um again just a great sounding guitar, great playing guitar. The moment everybody's been waiting on, they're like, you guys talk too much, don't play enough. Yep. Why don't you give us an extended demo? And if you guys want to hear a full song, we did a full song with both these guitars. There's, I like that I put that at the end of the video, so you listen to all that. You can click that link down <laughs> in our description to go directly to that uh, video of us performing on these instruments. But John, give us an extended uh, tone sample of the, the Dreadnought and the uh, Double O and let the people know what they sound like. Absolutely. appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite it's one we've made so far. We've, we've done hundreds of videos and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's gonna be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms, they're everywhere. They permeate the internet and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos and it sees how much you comment and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you in the next video.